Uh, it's day 14 and we have spent a very cold night in the James Fry shelter. We met um, a lovely guy called Jean, um, who really hardcore. Uh, we were sort of wearing every single thing that we possess and had wrapped our fly sheets and ground sheets around like the wooden bunky type areas and he just kind of strolled in right in the middle, slept right in the middle of the shelter in the open space in a 20 degree bag which um, is mental because ours were 10 degrees and like I say we were wearing everything we owned and we were still freezing. Um, so tonight we're going to attempt to go to the Alec Keddy shelter which is about 9 miles, 9.8 miles up the track um, but if we're making good time and the terrain seems to be really good as it is this morning we might head on into Boiling Springs, go to a B&B &B and check out the outfitters there. And um, we met a, uh, another guy, Villain, who just says we need to kind of get rid of our bare barrels. They're unnecessary, they're pretty weighty. Um, so we're going to see if we can get some Ursacs, which are a bit lighter and rodent proof. So that's what we're about today. Um, we did take a night off night before yesterday where we headed into Schippenberg um, but that wasn't technically Nero because we walked 10.8 miles one day stayed overnight in a motel and then did eight miles the following day so kind of didn't count but we did need to resupply and power up as well so that was kind of a, a essential an essential luxury I think Hey, so um, I apologise for the really bad editing. Um, I tried to do a voiceover clip for um, the appropriate bit, but um, there was a huge amount of wind noise um, and I couldn't do it. All it did was record my voice clip over the wind noise, which was um, even more irritating. Um, so basically what I wanted to say is when we left the Alec Kennedy shelter, um, we had met a guy called Zorro, um, who was from Spain and he did the Pacific Crest Trail last year um, and then the CDT, the Continental Divide Trail. So he was doing the um, Appalachian Trail this year, which is um, means he's going to get the Triple Crown, which is great. So he really experienced hiker and he had lots of tales to tell, which was fun. Um, and basically he gave us a very gentle shakedown about our stuff. So. Um, apparently this, the stuff that we were carrying was way too heavy so he very very gently decided to tell us um, what we should get rid of which was good um, and I managed to try on his pack in the morning so um, which was a Gregory Optic 58 litre and that seemed really comfortable didn't sit on my shoulder at all so I kind of made the decision to, to try and get that pack and um, then just get an Ursac and bear line to to, to sort the food out and then send those back down the trail. Um, so he was traveling with someone called Feral, who was just amazing. I mean, he just looked at us with scorn. It was just kind of funny. Um, yeah, so but they were two lovely, lovely people and we met them the following day as well, which was um, kind of nice when we were slack packing and walking back. So um, that's what I wanted to say at that at this particular point so everything will make sense i hope uh, it's day 16 and um we've mixed things up a little bit we came into boiling springs yesterday and as i said we were thinking about um swapping out some gear wasn't sure we were going to hire a car or whatever um it turned out what we wanted wasn't in a local rei my the pack um, that I wanted they didn't stock that size so ordered it off good old Amazon um, which means that we are going to hole up in a days in in Carlisle um, and in theory Amazon will be delivering my pack we're also going to switch out our bare barrels we're going to send those back down the trail and um, switch them out for some Ursacs and a bear line because um, listening to Zorro, it does make a massive difference, um, the weight that we're carrying and as I said, my pack and the bare barrel and everything alone is seven and a half pounds, which 
um, is literally insane. So that's what we've done, but obviously we don't want to hole up for too long and miss the mile. So what we kind of figured we'd do today was to leave most of our stuff at the motel and slack pack 15 miles back into Boiling Springs in the opposite direction so we can pick up some miles and also it means I can visit the outfitters there get some water repellent and some they had some vegetarian hiker food so that was, I think it was three meals um, so I'm really excited to try something I think they actually have vegetables in them which is going to be such a joy in comparison to mashed potato which I'm starting to get a little bit sick of um, had a fabulous meal last night at Chili's um, my first vegetarian meal I've ever seen on an American menu thus far and there was like vegetable fajitas so actual asparagus and green broccoli was consumed last night um, and it was delicious so uh, managed to do our laundry last night as well so again it, what's laughable is we seem to sleep less when we have a night off than we ever do when we're in a tent because we're up to sort of midnight fanning about with different things working out logistics um, and also there was an issue with water on this part of the trail I don't know if you can see me behind me there's a whopping great big creek I don't know why it listed a water issue um, but it did so we kind of thought to be on the safe side we would also do this stretch in reverse um, and take water with us it, it just seemed better that way um, for all those reasons so that's today I am thoroughly enjoying the fact that David here weighs fuck all absolutely nothing today so it's a really enjoyable hike in the woods lovely terrain and yeah I think today's gonna be a fantastic day hi viewers um, bit of a conundrum here we're heading towards the Darlington shelter we're about a mile away from the road which is down that hill in the middle of the woods that's the footpath in between those trees um, that is uphill all the way for about another mile and I'm just curious as to how this old car kind of got here clearly it's wrapped around this tree as you can see there and it also looks like it's got a very old well i'll call it chitty chitty bang bang engine i'm guessing it's a piston engine but it does look like it's been here for a while so that is an interesting thing to see in the middle of the woods maybe the woods weren't here when it crashed who knows so yeah first mystery of the morning I don't know if you can see in the distance there, that's where I've come from, Duncannon. Um, so this morning we left the red carpet in and we went into Duncannon to uh, meet Trail Angel Mary, um, who shuttled us back to the sleep in in Carlisle so we could pick up our delayed Amazon parcels which arrived yesterday. Um, we they had arranged to get them delivered Friday but because the Halifax decided to not authorise my credit card and not tell me, half the stuff was running a day late but we managed to get everything trail angel mary is an absolute delight and it allowed us to meet her basically um she is just super hiker friendly and puts herself out in her own time to kind of shuffle hikers about wherever um, for a very modest fee um, also she advised us to get a track phone um, which is basically a burner phone as one has perhaps seen on homeland and we did that for $40. We managed to get ourselves a cheap phone and some credit and then spend two hours trying to activate the fucking thing, um, which again, she helped us with. Uh, you know, we kind of sat in her front room while she poured over the internet and we YouTube videoed how to actually friggin' find your phone number on it, etc. So all good. And now we've set off. We've only got like four miles to do today. Um, so I'm feeling 
the benefits really of a couple of days off. Having yesterday in town also allowed me to go to a physiotherapist uh, in Duncannon who told me I'd got a bit of whiplash after my neck injury on day two when I kind of hit the deck in that. So I'm um, feeling quite good about things. We've got very, very heavy packs currently because we're going to be out for five days, hopefully this time. So um, I'm looking forward to things getting lighter by the day. But that's today. There's a storm brewing currently, which is supposed to hit about six o'clock. So we're hoping to be in the shelter, well, not in the shelter, but camped at the shelter in our tents before that arrives. Um, yeah, so, so far it's all good. I'm just going to show you this view because it is fantastic. There we go. Uh, it's quite hot today, um, this is reminding me of a day in late May, early June in the UK, so beautifully sunny and you can see the sort of trees are just waking up, there's loads of bushes <coughs> and you walk the same kind of path and then you come across something just beautiful like this. If I zoom into that because it's better than a photo, how amazing is that? The perfect posy. Morning, uh, it's day 22. Just headed out from Clark's uh, ferry shelter. Uh, came in last night, uh, just after my video, there was horrific rocks along the line, so it took us like another hour and a half to actually get into camp, which was only about a mile. But quite precarious big boulders that we had to kind of climb down from. Um, I was expecting the same this morning, but it's not been too bad. Oh, no problem at all. Um, this is the view. Uh, we can see a lot of this through the tree line. Um, the, the leaves have not set in as yet, so it's still a bit Blair Witch project. Um, but yeah, we had an amazing sunset through, through the trees last night. So it was almost clear as this, but I was going to take it because it was beautiful, but you can probably just see a few trees in a speck of sky. But yeah, this is what we can kind of see. spectacular really thank you to the power lines because that's something where we get in this fabulous view um yeah so i'm expecting more of the same i think we're going to walk along this ridge for about 12 13 miles today and uh hopefully make up i think we're going to just we're going to do a tent site tonight rather than an actual shelter because that's a bit too far apart it's been quite awkward logistically planning this one but uh yeah, hopefully if we can manage to do that, that'll be great. Okay, I can just confirm that I've seen my first super mahoosive snake. I was just walking along the path and there was a, a bit of a slither and a massive black snake kind of shot across the path in front of me. So yeah, snakes are out and about.